This review is made possible by Gerald Kia in Naperville. Gerald's outstanding staff is ready to find the perfect car for you. Whether it be new or used, your next car is waiting for you at Gerald Kia. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2022 Kia Carnival LX seat package. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6 and down below is an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Carnival for a few reasons. First of all, the Carnival is new for 2022. It has taken the place of the outgoing Kia Sedona, which I actually reviewed recently. And while I liked that minivan, I thought it was in desperate need of an upgrade. And so, this is the upgrade. The other reason I'm excited to review it is because this is the LX seat package. Now the LX Carnival is the base model. That is the lowest tier that you can buy and that starts around $32,000. But so the differences between the LX and the LX seat package are as follows. The standard Carnival gets seven seats, two in the front, two in the second row, and three in the rear. However, the seat package adds a third seat in the second row, making it an eight passenger vehicle. We'll talk about that third seat when we talk about the back seats, but the seat package also adds heated seats for the front driver and passenger, as well as the nicer leather option for the seats. So those are the three main things that come in the seat package on the Carnival. The eighth middle seat back there, heated seats for the front, and leather seats. So I hope that clears up some confusion. This is basically a base model with nicer seats. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are looking to help out the channel, there are a couple links in the description below from our awesome sponsors. One of which is Cash for Cars if you're looking to sell your used car. One is from Fixed, a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor to help diagnose your vehicle. And another from Conplates. Conplates is a suction cup license plate mount for your vehicle in case you don't want to drill into your front bumper. Each purchase or quote goes towards helping the channel and it's greatly appreciated. So let's get on with the video. So that out of the way, let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6 under the hood. Well, this is new for the 2022 Carnival. The outgoing Sedona had a 3.3 liter V6. The 3.5 liter makes almost almost 300 horsepower being rated at 290 horsepower and gets 19 miles to the gallon in the city and 26 miles to the gallon on the highway which aren't too bad of numbers for a minivan however one downside is that the Kia Carnival is not currently offered in a hybrid which is a shame because Kia has actually been kind of pushing the boundaries with hybrids and electrics recently they just brought out their Kia Nero EV and they have a bunch of other EVs on the way, like the EV6 has been announced and things like that. And the other reason that's kind of disheartening is because the Pacifica is available in a hybrid. The Toyota Sienna is available in a hybrid. So I think that they're a little bit behind the ball on that. Like I said, Paraduit is an eight speed automatic transmission and honestly it has felt great. I don't really hear it shifting. It's not bothering me. It's doing the job. It's nice and quiet. And that's all I can ask for from a modern automatic transmission. Last but not least, the Kia Carnival is front wheel drive and there is no all wheel drive offered like there is on the Toyota Sienna. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior and the first thing you notice right off the bat is the interior space. This feels a lot more spacious than the outgoing Kia Sedona. The dashboard feels a little bit further away, the gauges feel a little further away, the radio is nicely integrated into this sort of shelf. I really like the overall look of it, but let's get into some specifics. In front of me, I have two physical gauges. On the left is my tachometer and coolant temperature, and on the right is my speedometer and fuel, and then I get a little screen in the center giving me some basic information. Now, like I said, this is pretty much a base model when it comes to this stuff, and the upper trim levels actually have the digital gauges with the blind spot cameras from the Kia K900 or the new Sorento, which I love. So that's something you can seek out, but this current vehicle doesn't have it. On the steering wheel on the left, I have voice commands, mode, volume, skip track, favorites, and phone. And on the right, I have my page selector for that center screen and the gauges and my cruise control options. The steering wheel also gets the updated Kia badge. This is new for the 2022 models. At least some of them get the upgraded Kia badge or Kia logo, which looks fresh and modern. But honestly, to me, it kind of looks like K backwards N. 
To the left of me, I have my dimmer switch for the gauges, lane keep assist and traction control, and then down below, I have my power door options. I love the fact that I only get one dead switch, even in the base model. I love that. It feels like I got all the options, at least in this little segment of the car. It feels like I have all the options, which is very nice to feel in a base model. Then on the door, I have power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, we have the pretty typical Kia radio, so we'll go through it. So pretty standard stuff here when it comes to Kia infotainment. This is the older infotainment system from Kia. I'll show a clip here of the Seltos. That's the newer design. Um, but basically, you know, it works pretty standardly. I do have rear climate control, which is very nice. Quiet mode, which is great. It'll keep your radio low if like kids are sleeping in the back or something like that. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course. I could swipe over here. Also, I've set up in user manual and things like that. Nothing really too crazy. This trim level of the Carnival does not get the speaking system that the Sorento gets where you can talk to the third row. It does not come here in this particular Carnival, which is okay. We'll take a quick look at the backup camera as well. Decently clear and the lines do adjust when you turn the steering wheel, which is very, very nice and what I've come to expect out of Kia's pretty premium feature. A lot of other manufacturers don't do that. It's really, really helpful when they do. Down below the radio, we have two very large vents and we have this nice sort of brushed aluminum looking material that goes across the dash. I quite like the look of it, if I'm honest. Adds a little something, a little bit of spice to the interior. And then we have the climate controls. Very basic, very easy to see and use, which I love. And the reason I love that is because this is a minivan and you're going to have a kid in the passenger seat or you're gonna have multiple people driving the car very easy very simple and i could see these buttons lasting a very long time getting covered in mud and slurpees and baby bottles they're still gonna work and that's fantastic i do also have climate controls for the rear i can control them if the rear occupants are not able to then we have a cubby with three usbs two of which are just for charging one of which is for the radio itself and then just a little spot to put your phone, wallet, keys, whatever. This is a push to start vehicle, so you can lay your keys either in your pocket or down here in the center console. It doesn't really matter where the keys are as long as they're in the car. Then we have the center console itself. On the left here, we do have the shifter. Pretty much the same shifter you'll find in most Kia products. However, it does feel nice and solid. I really, really like it. You get a nice little piece of leather on the top. And then down below, we have our power parking brake, auto holding brake, and our drive mode. So the Kia Carnival has four different drive modes, normal, eco, sport, and smart. To the right of the shifter, I do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And unfortunately, it doesn't really fit. It wants to, it goes down a little bit, but not far enough where I could take a corner and have confidence in it. So unfortunately, the 2022 Kia Carnival fails the big friggin' bottle test. Then we have a couple of interesting buttons. We do have our heated seats. That's part of the seat package. Carnival, like I mentioned at the top of the video. Then I have my parking sensors on and off and I have a camera button. So the camera button lets you look at two different backup cameras here on the Carnival. A face down one as well as just a regular rear facing one. However, this camera cannot be turned on while the vehicle is moving. Unless the vehicle's in reverse, you cannot access this rear camera, which I wish you could, but I understand why you can't, because I would probably just stare at this rear camera and probably hit something. So I understand the reasoning. Then we have a giant center console with absolutely nothing in it, which is nice. You don't get any USB or anything like that. And then we gotta talk about the seats. Like I said, this is the upgraded leather seats, heated, and they are power which is very, very nice for a vehicle at this price point and this size. I like the adjustability of that. You don't have to reach down and pull that little bar under the seat. They are nice and comfortable and I think they look fresh and modern, which is always a good look. But speaking of seats, we have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2022 Kia Carnival LX seat package. First of all, the power doors really nice and smooth. Really like that and the fact that it gets power doors base, which is great. But let's talk about this center seat here. Well, in its down position, I have a little pad here and then two cup holders at the back. Creates a real nice center console for leaning on, talking, food, snacks, whatever it may be. 
I can also pull this tab back here, it's kind of noisy, but I can move this forward and back, which is really, really nice. All three of these seats can be moved forward and back and they can also be removed. That's part of the seat package as well, is that this second row can actually be removed. So if you're taking kids one weekend, have all eight seats in. But if you're moving apartments next weekend, take these seats out and put your flat screen TV in here. Up to the right, I do have my heating and air conditioning options for the second row. If someone up front is not controlling that, you can actually control that in the back. If you have a kid that can reach it or an adult or things like that, let's go take a look at the third row. So now we're in the third row of the Kia Carnival. I do have two USB chargers on either side, which is fantastic. And I can sit back here like an actual normal adult and I'm not squished. Headroom is great. Leg room is great. This is why minivans are superior. We'll talk about it a little bit later on, but I could sit back here like a normal adult and be comfortable. And with eight different seats, eight seats for this car, that is absolutely awesome. One thing before we take a look at the cargo that I forgot to mention is that there are USB chargers in the sides of the front seats for the second row, which is very nice. But let's hop behind me and take a look at the tailgate and the cargo space. All right, so around the back of the Kia Carnival. Does not have a power lift gate, which it was a little wet, so it was a little bit hard to grab. However, here is the back space. I do have a 12 volt, 180 watt outlet right here. I have some side cubbies. You can just stick stuff in there, which is really, really nice. And then these seats actually fold down into this compartment to take up the space. But obviously I have these floor mats and stuff, which are really, really nice. This is nice and deep. You can put a lot of things back here while still keeping that third row of seats up. This is lacking in a lot of SUVs because SUVs are raised up. They normally have a spare tire down there, whatever it may be. Behind the third row in an SUV, you don't normally get this much space. So that is super, super nice. And a huge perk of a minivan over a standard SUV. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And I think the styling is one of the most interesting parts of the carnival besides its own name. They styled this minivan to try to not look like a minivan. You can see the rear body lines, the rear sort of window is trying to look like an SUV, like a crossover, because crossovers are so hot and minivans, well, they're not super hot right now. And I think Kia actually kind of pulled it off. It looks different, it looks fresh, and it looks modern, and it doesn't look like a 15-year-old minivan. It looks brand new because it is brand new, and that's great. I love that in cars when they actually do get the styling somewhat right. They make it somewhat interesting. They make it different. And just the fact alone that I've been talking about the styling of a minivan for this long should just go to show their success in the styling because it actually got people to talk about it. But now a couple things in the final thoughts section of the video. Well, the name, Carnival. Personally, I don't agree with this name. I think that Kia switching the Sedona to the Carnival was kind of a weird move because it sort of breaks up what people have come to know and love as the Sedona the last 15, 20 years that they've been making them. You could buy an 05 Kia Sedona. Many people did. And then they bought a 2013 and then they bought a 2019. That brand loyalty is a little bit gone because Carnival, that's, that's something different. That's something I go to on a summer night when it comes to town. And that's my other issue with the name is the fact that it's a weird name. When I think of carnival, I think of elephants and peanuts and rides, Ferris wheels and lights. That's what carnival means to me. And the fun music and the laughing and the rides and then there's just this. This doesn't really mimic a carnival to me. That's something so exciting. I, I think it's a little bit of an overzealous name. However, the reason that they named it the Kia Carnival is because that's what it's been called overseas since its conception. And so Kia recently has been trying to standardize their lineup across the world. Why have different names for different countries? It doesn't really make sense. So that's why we saw the Kia Optima turn into the Kia K5. Overseas, it's always been the K5. So from that standpoint, I understand the name change. But now let's talk about my final thoughts on the Kia Carnival as a whole in its entirety. Well, I think this was a thorough upgrade over the Sedona. 
I like the interior space a lot better. I like the styling a lot better. And it definitely feels very, very modern. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Gerald Kia of Naperville for letting me take out their Kia Carnival. This is absolutely awesome. Been waiting to drive this for quite some time, and I'm glad I finally got in the seat of one. I think at $34,000, I think the Kia Carnival LX seat package is actually a really good deal, and I'm really happy with it. I really, really am. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. Really liked it. Take care, guys.